Welcome back to the channel, everybody. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini, and I am in my last year of training in interventional radiology in New York City. So on today's video, I wanted to talk about a little something that just went down, and that is, you probably know from the title of this video, but I'm gonna show you a little proof so you believe me, and that is, let's see if I can zoom in here. I just got my COVID vaccine. So I wanted to do this video because I want to dispel a few myths about the vaccine. And in doing so, I'm not going to go in depth about the vaccine like so many others have. I thought it would be a better idea just to bring you all along so we can document every single day after I get the vaccine. So hopefully some of you all will feel a little more comfortable getting it if you see what I went through. This video is sponsored by Rise Sleep and Personal Energy App. Rise uses two principles that sleep researchers agree have the most bearing on how we feel and perform, sleep debt and circadian rhythm. And Rise is the only app that helps you reduce sleep debt. And how does it do this exactly? It teaches you better sleep habits that are paired with your circadian rhythm for maximum effect. Rise shows you how to reduce your sleep debt through better sleep habits and tells you when your personal energy peaks and dips will be so you can make the most out of each day. And let's be honest, daily performance is everything, especially as a physician. Anything I can do to help me with my productivity, attention, and focus, I'm all for it. So do yourself a favor and download the Rise Sleep and Personal Energy app. Use the link in my description to get 40% off the annual Rise membership and also a free seven day trial. Download the Rise Sleep app today and get more sleep so you can make the most out of every day. Now, let's get back to the video. So here are the battle wounds here i just got it like literally half hour ago it came up here and now we're filming this so this is day one post covid vaccine the first of two vaccines that i will get the next one i'm scheduled to get on january 13th but this is the first one so far i have no side effects the actual vaccine went really well it was very streamlined and I honestly didn't even feel the actual vaccine. I didn't feel the needle go in my deltoid muscle like I usually do, like I did on the flu vaccine. And just for further proof, I'll post a picture of me getting the vaccine right here. So like I said, we're just going to document every single day after I got the vaccine for probably like a week or so, just so you all can see what goes on. Since technically we are some of the first people to get the vaccine in healthcare, I work in interventional radiology and I do image guided procedures on a ton of different patients in the hospital with a number of them being COVID positive, especially in the current climate. So I interact with these patients not too infrequently, maybe once or twice a week we'll do a procedure on a COVID positive patient, but it ultimately depends on the week. Sometimes we have more, sometimes we have less. So I was fortunate to get this vaccine. And since I was fortunate to get this vaccine, I just wanted to share with you all, bring you along for the ride and discuss everything that goes on after the vaccine. So in summary, this is day one. I have not really any pain whatsoever at my shoulder, no other side effects of the vaccine so far. So let's touch base again tomorrow for day two. All right, everybody. So it has been officially 24 hours after the vaccine. It is now Christmas Eve at almost the exact same time, 24 hours later. So this is technically day one now, I guess, 24 hours afterwards. So at this point, about 24 hours after the vaccine, some people, some of my colleagues, some of my friends have had low grade fever of about 99 degrees. Some of them have had some chills. Some of them have had a headache. Some of them just feel like kind of crap, general malaise kind of feeling. And some of them have complained of shoulder pain at the injection site. And of all of those symptoms I just listed, the only symptoms I've had are probably about four or five out of 10 shoulder pain at the injection site. It feels kind of like I just did like a million deltoid raises on just my left arm and I didn't really notice it. And then I woke up this morning and I rolled on it and I was like, oh, kind of hurts. But it just reminds me of like a tetanus shot. You know how tetanus shot always tends to hurt more. And uh, honestly, this felt the same as the flu shot last time. Obviously it's nothing to complain about. It's not any severe pain or anything of the sort. It's completely manageable. I don't notice it unless I like raise my arm like this or if I hit my shoulder on something or something like that. 
I did have a slight headache this morning when I woke up. I took a Tylenol and I feel better. So overall, I haven't experienced any of the negative symptoms really. I haven't had a fever, chills, or anything like that. So I can tell between the headache, arm pain, all this stuff, my body's working a little bit in overtime, trying to get my immunity up. So uh, yeah, it's doing its thing, and hopefully we are building antibodies as we speak. So like I said, it is Christmas Eve. I'm going to go have a nice dinner, and we'll check in tomorrow for day two, or 48 hours after the vaccine. See you then. All right, so it is now 48 hours after I received the COVID vaccine, dose number one, and as far as symptoms go, well, before I get into the symptoms, let's go ahead and first say Merry Christmas to those of you all who celebrate Christmas because it is the 25th of December at 10 o'clock p.m. Christmas is over or ending soon. And uh, yeah, we had a good Christmas and had a lot of fun today. But the main reason I wanted to jump on here because it is 48 hours after I received the COVID vaccine. And as far as symptoms go, I have maybe, actually, I don't think I have any shoulder pain whatsoever. I don't have any fever. I don't have any chills. I do not have a headache. I feel 100% fine 48 hours after the vaccine. So we'll check in tomorrow and see how it goes. All right, so it is now 72 hours after my initial vaccine of the first dose of the Pfizer COVID vaccine. For reference, it is 5.40 on December 26th, as you can see right there. So almost exactly 72 hours after the COVID vaccine. I have maybe some minimal, I'm not even gonna call it pain, I'll call it tenderness at the injection site. I've, I'd probably rate it a 0 0.01 out of 10 because it's not really pain. I can, if I push really hard, I can feel some soreness in my shoulder, but literally doesn't bother me at all and I don't even notice it. Also, I do not have any fever, I do not have any chills, I do not have a headache, I do not have any fatigue or body aches or anything like that, and I haven't experienced any of that this entire course of the vaccine so far. So since it has been 72 hours and I have not experienced any symptoms whatsoever, I'm not going to keep on doing these videos every single day because one, it's time consuming and I almost forget like every single day to do this. As you can see, last night I did it at 10 p.m. when I got home. And secondly, nothing is going to change because most of the time after receiving a vaccine, you experience side effects immediately, if not a couple days after the vaccine. So now I'm pretty much in the clear. I don't anticipate me having anything serious like anaphylaxis two weeks out, which would be like the first case ever reported in history. So I'm not going to keep bothering you and drawing this out any longer than I have to. I thought if I would go over some of the results of this trial, maybe you all would know what to expect since my vaccine was pretty uneventful, even though some people are reporting some of the symptoms, which I'll tell you about right now. All right, so the Pfizer vaccine was just FDA approved almost about two weeks ago, so it's pretty recently now. And the study that they did started in July 20th of this year. Oh, sorry, July 27th of this year, which is pretty crazy how fast they're getting this vaccine out. Also, the wind is blowing, so my blinds are making crazy sounds. But anyways, let's get into some of the results. All right, so this study had two arms. It was a blinded study having a group that received the vaccine and a group that did not receive the vaccine, but they received a placebo. So both people had shots in their arm. Some got the actual vaccine, some did not. That's how that works. There were 18,000 or so people in each group, so a little over 36,000 participants total. Most of them were in the 16 to 55 year old age group and mostly white Americans. So of the participants that received both the placebo and also the actual vaccine, Pfizer looked at different symptoms that each of those people experienced. So of those symptoms, pain was one of the most common symptoms people experienced. Of the people who received the vaccine and the placebo, 47% of the patients that experienced fatigue actually got the vaccine. But interestingly enough, 33% of the people who received the placebo vaccine or just a shot of nothing into their arm, 33% of them experienced fatigue, which is very interesting and why placebo effect is pretty crazy when you think about it. Also, one of the more common symptoms was headache, 
and chills was somewhat common as well. So a few things to look at, the proportion of participants who received local reactions did not increase after the second dose of the vaccine. Systemic events were more often reported by younger people receiving the vaccine and more often after the second dose of the vaccine. And I've only gotten the first dose of the vaccine, so the second one is due on January 13th. Systemic events, including fever and chills, were observed for the first one to two days after vaccination, and they resolved shortly thereafter, which is what a lot of my colleagues and friends were experiencing. And the most important thing about this trial is the efficacy appears to be greater than 95%. So in conclusion, I just want to give you all my experience after getting this vaccine. It was pretty uneventful in my opinion. I'll give you an update once I get the second dose in January, but yeah. So use this information however you may please. I personally think it's a good idea as a physician to get this vaccine. It'll help you, it'll help many others around our country as well, and, and across the globe for that matter. So hopefully some of this information can help you all. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Otherwise, that concludes this video. Make sure you smash the like and subscribe button, follow me on Instagram and TikTok, and I'll see you all on the next video.